medical future, what we're going to see is more precise and less invasive surgeries. So a good example of that today would be surgeries that are laparoscopic, that involve a tiny camera going into an area, being able to see the problem, being able to fix the problem, and pretty much um, the smaller the incision is the goal that the medical field is trying to go in. More keyhole type incisions, um, smaller is kind of the more developed practice in surgeries. Um, they're also going to be able to direct radio waves in areas in pain and energy and this will help to alleviate pain, this will help to speed up the healing process, and um, it's, more, it's going to be more effective than medicines or um, other treatments that we currently use. We're also going to see a new white light activated drug, and what this is going to do is, again, help alleviate pain, it's going to create more accuracy, and it's going to be able to pone in on the area of concern within the body. So it's going to... Um, if you had a breast tissue um, abnormality, the white light activated um, drug will be able to go and sense the area of concern so then doctors are able to go in and properly diagnose and know where the exact location of the problem is. Another advancement we're going to see in the um, medical field is robosurgery. What this is able to do is offer exact precision that sometimes we may not be able to get with human surgeons. Um, it's going to be more effective. It's obviously going to be more sterile and clean. So surgery is going to be a new, more safer form of surgery. Prescription drugs are also being made to have less side effects. So take, for example, when you see a prescription drug commercial, you hear the list of side effects from suicide, vomiting, don't operate heavy machinery. Drug, drugs may oftentimes affect people differently. Removing some of the side effects of this is going to help the drug be more effective and benefit the patient or consumer taking the drug. Nanotechnology is also going to be appearing more in the medical field than ever before. Um, they're going to, nanotechnology is going to give us the ability to use a pinprick of blood to be able to give the patient a complete diagnosis of the problem. Mature nanotechnology based medicine will be able to solve almost any problem. Nano machines are going to be able to mimic white blood cells, which I found very interesting because that means it could potentially cure leukemia, which I believe is the cancer of the blood. It's also going to be able to help us get over things from cancer to the common cold a lot faster. Um, these little nanotechnology machines also have the ability to eliminate invaders, so it will help us get a sick less often. It'll help remove the bad without removing the good. Gene therapy is another advancement in the technology medical field. Potential, it's going to offer potential cures for many of today's diseases. What they do is they take new genes from modified viruses and they're able to insert those genes into the area of concern and able to help remove the problem that is at bay. So um, it's going to act kind of like how antibiotics act in what we use today, but the benefit of gene therapy is that unlike antibiotics, Antibiotics kind of work like a nuclear bomb in a town. It gets rid of all the good people and all the bad people, where with gene therapy, it's only going to get rid of the bad and not all of the good, because we all know you need good bacteria, you need good germs, that's what fights bad germs. Um, they are going to be able to eject new gene carriers. This is going to be able to cure many different diseases, because oftentimes, Many diseases are, call, are caused from one malfunctioning gene. Um, for example, immunodeficiency, cystic fibrosis, is just one malfunctioning gene. If we're able to inject good genes into the area, then it is able to take away the bad and potentially fix the problem. Another cool advancement I found in the medical field was sunscreen in a pill. Um, what this sunscreen is, is it's derived from a coral plant that is in the coast, I think, in Australia. And Australia, I've never been there, but I've heard it's very hot. 
And what this coral is able to do is use this protective layer of algae to prevent itself from getting sunburn. And what we have been able to do is take that algae and be able to transfer it into a drug that we are able to take to protect our, the sun from our skin and our eyes. Um, it's going to start out prescription only just to prevent people from overdoses. A lot of times I think new medications tend to come out prescription only just to figure out the side effects and any problems with the drug. Um, and it is going to be seen within the next five or so years. So definitely something that is exciting, I think, to look out for. Another invention in our modern day is going to be the crash-proof car. Volvo promises to have a crash-proof car by the year 2020. Car accidents kill 30,000 people in the U.S. yearly. So I think without, or needless to say, that a crash-proof car would definitely save 30,000 lives a year. Um, what this crash proof car does, it uses radar, sonar, and other technologies to prevent and migrate accidents. It also has an internal braking system, and the car would steer and brake on its own in the event of an accident. Um, it uses vehicle to vehicle or V2V communication with other cars around it so it would know where the other cars are based on you know radar and sonar signals and it would be able to communicate with other cars it would be able to communicate with other um, infrastructures which is the V2I um, communication that it uses so it's definitely very smart and very advanced and something that we are going to see in the future from Volvo. I think it is really admirable of Volvo to take the chance in developing this car and to keep safety um, in the mind of the consumer when they think of Volvo. Another safe way of travel we are going to see is the solar driven plane. This plane is called the Solar Impulse. The poly polymer lithium batteries are able to charge based off of the sun's radiation. It is designed to take the sun's radiation it is putting off and absorb that, turn it into power to fuel the airplane and converting it into the power it needs to run on. It just did recently travel from coast to coast and land in JFK Airport I think just this week or last week. So this is something very fresh and very new that we could potentially see um, within the next coming years. It's going to be a sustainable form of travel Obviously that's going to help the environment because we want to be developing technologies that are sustainable and more environmentally friendly. The solar driven airplane is also a more sustainable way of travel because it uses less gas which is putting in less emissions and it is also using less oil that we don't, that is not a renewable resource. This is also helping to keep greenhouse gases lower because we are not releasing as much CO2 into the atmosphere. As you know, planes are a large form of travel and can carry a lot of people to many different places. Wouldn't it be nice with the solar airplane being a more environmentally stable way to get us from point A to point B? It uses the same amount of energy that the Wright plane did in 1903. It has a state-of-the-art made-up four-motor system containing polymer lithium bat containing poly polymer lithium containing polymer lithium batteries, and it uses a heat management system to absorb the sun's radiation to transfer it and make it into fuel to fly itself. It's something developers are still in the work thinking of. Um, they definitely have to do a little bit more research on it due to weight, um, due to the amount of energy that it can hold, seeing how far it's going to be able to travel. There's still a little bit of work that needs to be done, but was definitely a huge advancement this week in um, being able to land at the JFK airport. In conclusion, what I think that I hope my presentation taught you was that technology is changing day to day. It's very hard to predict what's gonna happen when. Um, I would have never thought as a kid that my cell phone was going to go from playing Snake, which is a little black and white dot connecting game, to playing Angry Birds on an iPhone. It's hard to predict technology and what it's going to do and how it's going to adapt into our everyday lives. 
It has the ability to cure many potential diseases and help in the medical field tremendously and hopefully save many lives along the way. Um, the way we travel may change due to technology and that's also going to keep us safe. So really what I want you to take away from this is technology in the, of the future is being built to benefit us. It's being built to benefit the consumer, the user, and to make our lives easier. So it's changing every day. Try to keep up with the pace. And thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you have a good day. My references are included. Thank you.